In this video, we're going to tell you the truth about air scrubbers. We're going to go over what they are, do they work, we're going to talk about some of the scientific data that's backing up, you know, air scrubbers and how they perform and what value they actually bring and if they bring any value and if they're actually bad for your home. And at the end of this video, we'll even talk about the conclusion that the EPA came to about them so you can kind of get both sides of the story and hear what people say about air scrubbers. But before we get started, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you smash that like button for the algorithm and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. It's a free way you can show support if you get value from this content. We put out daily and weekly content on how you can get the best HVAC for your home. So if you find this content enjoyable, it's much appreciated and it's a great way you can show your support. So that being said, let's just dive into the topic and first talk about what air scrubbers are. Now I have the website for air scrubber pulled up on my computer here. So I want to show you what we're looking at and what we're actually talking about when it comes to the air scrubber product. Now this little box right here. It's actually something, this is a whole home IAQ product. IAQ stands for indoor air quality. This sits in your ductwork. It's very easy to install. It's a matter of cutting in a hole in the supply of your ductwork right above your evaporator coil, which is part of the indoor component of your air conditioner. You pop it in the duct right there and basically connect it to your system. And when your fan is on and circulating air, this thing is scrubbing the air and it's ionizing the air. And what is going on when it's ionizing? in the air is it's the way that they pitch these and we'll talk about kind of what they say. Now the cliff notes are it says it's proven to reduce up to 99.9% .9 common airborne and surface contaminants. So this thing is removing you know bacteria, it's removing viruses, anything that's kind of some of the claims that it's making. So it says it uses the latest version of active pure technology. We'll talk about that in a second. It provides 24-7 surface decontamination and air purification. So surface decontamination means that if this is sitting above uh, coil. Basically, it's going to be decontaminating the area that that UV light is shining. It reduces allergens and other airborne contaminants in the air. It stalls directly into the existing ductwork, like I mentioned earlier, and it protects your heating and cooling system from potential buildup. So those are some of the alleged benefits. That's what they claim. Let's see what the actual data is. Now, they say they back this up with, you know, a third-party laboratory. So this is active pure. Now, this is the data behind this. It says proven efficacy in both lab studies and, you know, the real world. And and basically, here's what is what it sh says in a, a 60 minute. So this is basically for before and after treatment for different viruses that are in the air. It's talking about mold, bacteria, you know, different viruses. And if you look at, it talks about different fungus in the air, 99.0% reduction of surface contaminants. So this is going to be especially true, you know, in the ductwork where that actual light is shining because there is a UV component to it. It also shows that there's reduction of, I don't know that people people are that worried about this so much anymore, but I do hate getting sick. And I know a lot of people are worried about. Now, this test was done in relation to, you know, airborne SARS or COVID. So this is going to apply to other, you know, pathogens as well. And it goes into that down here. But you can see, I mean, the chart kind of says it all. Airborne reduction. So passing through that airway, this is probably before and after that. You know, it says after one minute, 99.9% .9 reduction. It takes a little bit longer to reduce it on surfaces. Bottom line is that, you know, it works for a variety of these bacteria and viruses that are in the air. So you're talking about flu, any of the COVID viruses, Legionella, things like this is something that actually shows up in evaporator coils sometimes, but really just airborne stuff, spores, mycobacteria, fungi, any sort of airborne contaminants, this is designed to remove. This study was actually performed by a third-party laboratory. The laboratory is Aerosol Research and Engineering Laboratories. I'll link this in the description so you have access to it. I mean, it looks pretty legit to me. This is a third-party data validation. The science is definitely in on on UV light, right? We know it does do something. It's not a placebo effect. Same thing with ionizers and purifiers like the scrubber. But even though the science is in on this, one of the controversial topics about the air scrubber or the air scrubber product lines is the fact that they produce ozone. Now, if you're interested specifically in an ozone free product, you can go to the air scrubber website and they have right here, they have plenty of other ozone free products that will filter air in your home. And these are ozone free. So they're not going to produce any ozone. ozone Ozone, is it bad for you? Yeah, probably sure. We'll find out shortly. Like I said, we're going to go into the EPA reports. I kind of take some of these studies with a grain of salt. It seems like every year they come out with like a new diet or a new thing that's like the latest craze and it's going to fix your health and everything's going to be great. And then a year later, they're like, oh yeah, that diet's going to kill you. And you're like, well, that's great. I hope I don't die. But you know, because I've been doing that diet for a year, but uh, good to know now. I'm glad the science is back in or whatever. Like it's okay to eat bread again. Thanks. I thought gluten was going to kill me for years. Bottom line is, 
when you look at these, what it does, the side effect of producing ozone is really important for people that have, some people actually notice it. Like they'll get a, a system like this. And if you have asthma or you have a sensitive respiratory system, a lot of people will voice complaints or concerns with this because you'll have trouble breathing and congestion. It's just not, listen to your body, right? I'm really curious what your experience is. So if you have one of these air scrubber products, please post in the comment section below. Let us know, like, does it work for you? Do you notice the air is fresher? I definitely notice the air will be fresher anytime there is an air scrubber in the house. That is a fact. It does reduce smells as well. That's just one of the, you know, side effects of these products. And so if you have one in your house and it is, you know, making the air smell fresher and you don't have any, you know, side effects from the ozone, post a comment in the comment section below letting us know. We're going to go into the EPA results in a second because they published some interesting findings about these. But I'm always curious to hear what people's first and reports are because if you're using one or you've used one in the past and you had side effects, I want to hear about it. So again, let me know what you think in the comment section below if you've had one. Now, like I said, we've gone through, you know, the data is in that they do actually produce some sort of effect. This is a third party lab, which again, I'll link. This is linked on their website as well. But if you go and you look, and I just kind of jumped through the cliff notes because there's a lot of data here. This is from epa.gov on the indoor air quality. But basically, I just came down here and clicked on conclusions because I wanted the TLDR version. It says, whether in its pure form or mixed with other chemicals, ozone can be harmful to health. So when inhaled, ozone can damage the lungs. Relatively low amounts can still cause chest pain, coughing, shortness of breath, throat irritation, and it may also worsen chronic respiratory illnesses such as asthma as well as compromise the ability of the body to fight respiratory infections. So that's from directly from the EPA. It says some studies have shown that ozone concentrations produced by ozone generators can exceed health standards even when one follows manufacturer's instructions. Now they're talking about you know things like the Remy Halo that produce ozone or this air scrubber. Many factors affect ozone concentrations including the amount of ozone produced by the machine, the size of the indoor space, the amount of material in the room in which the ozone reacts, the outdoor ozone concentration, and the amount of ventilation. These factors can make Make it difficult to control the ozone concentration in all circumstances. And then this last part says available scientific evidence shows that at concentrations that do not exceed public health standards, ozone is generally ineffective in controlling indoor air pollution. The concentration of ozone would have to greatly exceed health standards to be effective in removing most indoor air contaminants. In the process of reacting with chemicals indoors, ozone can produce other chemicals that themselves can be irritating and corrosive. So this is from the EPA. The EPA is by no means neutral, at least in my opinion. I know they're supposed to be a, a non-biased government agency, but bottom line is this, you know, pretty much spells it out. And the science has kind of been in on ozone that it does, we know it irritates people with asthma. People with asthma are obviously more sensitive than the general population. But again, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you have one of these in your home? Is it, you, do you notice an issue with it? And, you know, if I had to give my recommendation or what I would prefer in my home, I'd probably go with a more mechanical filtration product like the train clean effects which we talk about in another video there's other indoor air quality products that are similar but anything that is a polarizer versus something that ionizes the air and produces ozone just because if there's any sort of sketchy data out there I tend to be concerned with what are those effects going to be now first-hand experience is you know there's so many things out there I think if you live in a crowded congested city where there's a ton of smog going outside is basically bad for you and breathing out there so that's just something to consider I kind of take this stuff with a grain of salt and that's why I kind of just like to ask for people's feedback on what your particular experience is with these products if you've used any of them what do you think about you know the air scrubber is this something you would consider putting in your home do you think it's all a placebo anyways but either way hope you found this content helpful and if you happen to be in one of the areas we service like Denver Colorado or Phoenix Arizona you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free we come out for free for all first-time customers whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement and there's actually a link in the description below where you can actually schedule online at your convenience as well as an up-to-date list of the cities and states that we service so you can stay up to date when we start servicing your metro and right now popping up on the screen are a few other videos YouTube thinks you should watch as well as a video about the train clean effects air cleaner that we referenced earlier. So check that out if you haven't done so already and we will catch you on the next episode.